السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله ألا وإن أصدق الكلام كلام الله وخير الهدى هدى محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار So we left off last week um, Sheikh Ahmed Bazmool He said regarding the statement of Sheikh Muhammad Ibn Abdul Wahab Ibn Abdul Wahab I'lam rahimakallah know or have knowledge of the fact may Allah have mercy upon you Sheikh Ahmed Bazmul he said I'lam ay tayaqan wajzim wa la takun indaka shak he said I'lam means have certainty and have no doubt regarding this matter here he says wal-itiyanu bi kalima I'lam tufidu al-intibah wa tanbih li talib al-ilm he said the word i'lam it means that he's trying to draw the attention to the student of knowledge he's trying to draw the he's trying to get the students and he's trying to get the student to pay attention to what he's about to say <clears throat> he said and these are issues that are that should be, that we should give great concern, we should pay great, great concern to, and that we should uh, pay attention to, and that we should memorize. ثُمَّ دَعَ لَهُ بِأَنْ يَرْحَمَهُ اللَّهُ عَزَّ وَجَلُّ وَهَذَا مِنْ حُسْنِ تَرْبِيَتِهِ وَعِنَايَتِهِ He said, then the shaykh made dua for Allah to have mercy upon the student. And this is from the good cultivation of the shaykh towards uh, to the student, and it's for the and this is from the concern from the shaykh for the student. And that the shaykh makes du'a for his uh, 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 Muslim brothers. Remember, we're going back to the beginning where he's explaining the statement of Shaykh uh, Muhammad Wahab when the shaykh began his book by saying, "Have knowledge of the fact. May Allah have mercy upon you." So he's basically he's explaining that particular sentence. وأني أوكي وأن يدعو على طلاب العلم وهذه صفة العالم العالم يحدث على الخير وعلى النفع وعلى هداية الناس. He said, and this is from the characteristics of a scholar. Is that a scholar? He's concerned with good and benefit, and he's concerned with guiding the people. Oh no. He's he's concerned with he's concerned with guiding the people. وعلى أن يكون المسلم مستنيرا بالحق عاملا به. And he's concerned that a Muslim be enlightened with be enlightened with the truth and act upon it. أما الغلظة والفضاضة والشدة على المسلمين الذين هم على الحق فليست من الحق. He says as for being stern. Hard and harsh upon the Muslims who are upon the truth, then that is not from the truth. And that is not from the way of the scholars. And it's not from the way of the pious predecessors. May Allah have mercy upon them. So the Shaykh is saying that when Shaykh Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab says in his book, Have knowledge, may Allah have mercy upon you. He's saying the shaykh, he, he, say this show, he says this shows 
that the sheikh is being uh, gentle with the student. He's concerned with the student. And then he's saying that um, it's not from the way of the scholars to be hard upon the people who are upon the truth. Okay? And it's not from the way of the pious predecessors to be hard upon the people who are upon the truth. وَقَدْ كَانَ أَبُوْ سَعِيدٍ الْخُدْرِي رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُ عِنْدَمَا يُرَى طُلَّابِ الْعِلْمِ يَحْتَفُّ بِهِمْ وَيَقُولُ مَرْحَبًا بِوَصِيَّةِ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم. And Abu Sa'id al-Khudri, one of the companions, when he saw the students of knowledge, he would, he would get excited and he would take care of them. And he would say, Welcome to, the, welcome to those who the Messenger of Allah advised us to be concerned with. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. al ulama yas'aluna an ahwali bihim wa yahtamuna bihim. He said, and the scholars, they used to ask about their students and be concerned with them. So he's just basically pointing out the fact that the scholars are generally, he's basically saying that the scholars are generally concerned. The scholars are, are con this, uh, one of the signs of the, of the scholars is that they're concerned, they're concerned with, they're concerned with the students. لِذَلِكَ شَيْخُ الْإِسْلَامِ مُحَمِّدُ بْنَ عَبْدُ الْوَحَابِ رَحِيمُ اللَّهِ نَجِدُ عِنْدَهُ هَذَا الْأُسْلُوبِ وَهَذِهِ الرَّحْمَةِ وَهَذِهِ الشَّفَقَةِ عَلَى غَالِبِ كُتُبِهِ فَجِزَاهُ اللَّهُ خَيْرٍ Sheikh Ahmed Bazmuli said, for this reason, we find that Sheikh Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahab, he has this way of being merciful and concerned about his students in all of the books that he wrote. قَالَ إِعْلَمْ رَحِيمَكَ اللَّهُ أَنَّهُ يَجِبُ عَلَيْنَا تَعَلُّمُ أَرْبَعِي مَسَائِلٍ he said, have knowledge of the fact, may Allah have mercy upon you, that it is compulsory upon us to learn about four matters. Qawluhu <laughs> yajibu His statement, Sheikh Ahmed Bazmul continues with his explanation. He says, the statement of Sheikh Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab, have knowledge, may Allah have mercy upon you, of the fact that I, yajibu uh, alayna, his Sheikh Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab's statement, it is obligatory upon us. Yajibu alayna. Ay, yajibu ala kulli muslim wa muslima. That is, it is obligatory <coughs> upon every Muslim, male and female. An yata'allama hadihi al-masail al-arba'a. Wan yutqinaha. That it is obligatory upon every Muslim male and female to learn these four matters and to perfect them. لِأَنَّهَا مِمَّا أَمَرَ اللَّهُ عَزَّ وَجَلَّ بِتَعْلُمِهَا Because these are from the things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordered us to learn. وَلِأَنَّهَا مِمَّا يَقُومُ عَلَيْهِ دِينُ الْمَرْءَ And because these are four of the things that a person's religion is based upon. فَلَا يَنْبَغِي لِمُسْلِمٍ أَنْ يَجْحَلَهَا فضلاً عن أن يتجاهلها وأن لا يهتم بها. He says, so it is not befitting for Muslim to be ignorant of these matters, much less uh, pretend to be ignorant or of them or not be concerned with them. هذه الأربعة المسائل يبين لنا شيخ الإسلام محمد بن عبد الوهاب رحمه الله أنها مما يجب علينا أن نتعلمها أن أن نتعلمها كما يجب عليك he said, Sheikh Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab, he's, he's saying that, <clears throat> he's clarifying to us that it is obligatory upon us to learn these matters just like it is obligatory upon us to learn certain acts of worship. فَتَعَلُّمُ هَذِهِ الْمَسَائِلِ مِنَ الْعِبَادَاتِ الْوَاجِبَةِ عَلَيْكَ يَا عَبْدُ اللَّهُ وَيَا أَمَتَ اللَّهُ So Sheikh Ahmed Bazmul says, so learning these four matters is, is, is obligatory upon you Just like it is obligatory upon you to learn Learning these four matters Are from the obligatory uh, acts of worship That you need to, that you need to know ما هي المسألة, مسألة الأولى What is the first matter قال الأولى العلم وهو معرفة الله ومعرفة نبيه ومعرفة دين الإسلام بالأدلة He said the first is Knowledge of the religion the first matter that you have to know is knowledge of the religion. And that is 
having awareness of Allah, having awareness of His Prophet, and having awareness of the religion of Islam with the evidence or with its proof. فَالْمُرَادُ بِالْعِلْمِ أي الْعِلْمَ الشَّرْعِ He says, so that which is intended by knowledge is knowledge of the shara, knowledge of the religion. وَالْمُرَادُ مِنَ الْعِلْمِ مَعْرِفَةُ اللَّهِ عز وجل أن تعرف الله عز وجل بأنه سبحانه هو الخالق الرازق المدبر الذي بيده الأمور كله كلها. So of course when he when he when he when he's speaking about knowledge here he's speaking about knowledge of the religion. <coughs> that is the knowledge that Allah سبحانه وتعالى has obliged us to to learn. And he says um, when he when he says you have to have awareness of Allah. What he means is that you have to have to have awareness of the fact that Allah is the creator, He is the provider, uh, He is the mudabbir, which means that He is in control of all the affairs, and all of the affairs are in His hand, meaning that He's in, he's in control of everything. kullahum fuqara'u illah. And that the people in the in the creation are, are all in need of Allah, the mighty and majestic. Wa anna Allah Azza wa Jal huwa al ghani. And that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He is al-ghani. Al-ghani means that He's independent. He doesn't need anything. Whereas everything is in need of Him. فَتَعْرِفُهُ بِرُبُوبِيَّتِهِ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى So you know Him by His Lordship, uh, سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى وَتَعْرِفُهُ بِأُلُوهِيَّتِهِ بِأَنَّهُ الْمُسْتَحِقُ أَن تُسْرَفَ إِلَيْهِ جَمِيعُ أَنْوَاعِ الْعِبَادَةِ and you know him with his worship, by his uluhiyya. That he is the one who has the right that all types of worship be directed to him. Qawlan wa fi'lan. Speech as well as action. Wa'atiqadan and belief. Huwa al-mustahiqu laha. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is the one who has the right for it. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. The glorified and exalted. Qawla ta'ala. Allah ta'ala says, قُلْ إِنَّ صَلَاتِي وَنُسُكِي وَمَحْيَاءُ وَمَمَاتِي لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ لَا شَرِيكَ لَهُ وَبِذَلِكَ أُمِرْتِ Allah says, Say, O Muhammad, Indeed my prayer, my sacrifice, my living and dying is all for Allah, the Lord of the worlds. He has no partner, and with this I have been ordered. So that's the evidence that the Shaykh brought for, Shaykh Muhammad um, ibn Abdul Wahhab brought Afwan. That's the uh, evidence that Sheikh Ahmed Bazmu brought, brought for these statements, the previous statement. That ayah is in Surah, I um, can't remember right now, subhanAllah. But I, I, um, if you give me a green mushaf, I, I, I'll, I'll try to pull it up for you. وَمَعْرِفَةُ أَسْمَائِهِ وَصِفَاتِهِ When we done, I, I, I'll get it for you. Just write down the ayah that you want. The, the different, the different, whatever ayats you want, and I'll try because he doesn't, he doesn't put the references here. Oh, no references. Yeah, I would, I would have to, I would have to get them for you, inshallah. I'll get them later. Yeah, just, just make a note, okay. and when we're done, I'll, I'll get them. Um. وَمَعْرِفَةُ أَسْمَائِهِ وَصِفَاتِهِ And knowing his names and, and his uh, characteristics or his, descript, his descriptions or his attributes. أَسْمَائِهِ <coughs> الْحُسْنَى His lofty names, uh, his, uh, his good names. وَصِفَاتِهِ الْعُلَى And his lofty attributes. وَأَنَّ لَهُ أَسْمَاءً وَصِفَاتٍ تَلِيقُ بِجَلَالِهِ And that he has names <coughs> and attributes that befit his majesty. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. نؤمن بها على حقيقتها كما أثبتها سبحانه وتعالى. We believe in them the way they the way they are, and we affirm them. Uh, Afwan, uh, we 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 believe in them the way they are as He has affirmed them, the glory and majestic, the glory and exalted في كتابه as He has affirmed them in His book. وأثبتها الرسول and and that and the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam affirmed them in His Sunnah. على ما يليق من غير تكييف ولا تمثيل ولا ولا تعطيل ولا تحريف 
<clears throat> in a way that is befitting for him. So we affirm, basically, he's explaining Tawheed as sifat which means that we affirm that which Allah has affirmed for himself in his book. We affirm the names and the characteristics that and the characteristics that Allah has affirmed for Himself in His book, or that the Messenger of Allah has affirmed for Him in the Sunnah. Okay, in a way that benefits His Majesty. Min takif, without saying how. Wala tamthil, and not likening Him or His char- or His characteristics to the creation. Wala taatil, and without denying them. ولا تحريف and without distorting the meaning. ومن العلم الذي يجب أن نتعلم معرفة نبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم. And from the knowledge that is obligatory for us to learn is having awareness of our Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم. وأنه يجب أن يطاع and that it is obligatory to obey him. لأنه رسول من الله عز وجل because he is a messenger from Allah. Azza wa Jal wa annahu bashar and that he's a human being sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yuha ilayhi he's a human being who received revelation wa yuta'u fi ma amar wa yujtanabu ma naha anhu wa zajar wa yusaddaqu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam fi ma akhbar so he's explaining here that these are some of the things that we have to do with in, in relation uh to the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Regarding the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam He said Ta'atuhu fi ma amar We have to obey that which We have to obey his, his, his commands Wajtinabu ma naha anhu wa zajar And we have to avoid his prohibitions We have to We have to believe in that In, the, in that which he's informed us about Regarding the unseen Wa ma'rifatu deen al-Islam Alladhi ja'a bihir rasul and we have to have awareness of the religion of Islam that the Messenger came with, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Min indillah, from Allah. Meaning the religion that he came with from Allah. Wa ballaghahu atammal balagh wa akmala. And he conveyed this message with the most complete conveyance. <clears throat> Allah says, Al yawma akmaltu lakum deenakum, wa atmamtu alaykum ni'mati, wa raditu lakum al Islam deena. Allah says, Today I have completed for you your religion. And perfected my blessing upon you and chosen for you Al Islam as, as a religion. That's in Surah Ma'idah, the first few ayat of Surah Ma'idah. One of the first few ayat. Fala Buddha min al ilmi bihadihi al umur. So we have to have knowledge of these affairs. Wa an yatadabbar al abdu hadihi al mas'alat al ula. And that a slave contemplates this first. Issue or this first matter. Well, let's say yet, insha'Allah, al kathiru min tafasiliha fil usul thalatha. He said, and insha'Allah, a lot of the, a lot of the details are going to come in the three fundamental principles. He needs to kill them on her, Sheikh al Islam, Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahab, Rahimullah. For in the who the Koraha, Huna Ijmalan, was a Yufa Siluha, Fima Yeti. So he's saying that the Sheikh is going to explain these three matters in more detail later on in the book. Three matters meaning <clears throat> he's going to explain this first this first matter, which is having awareness of Allah, having awareness of his messenger, and having awareness of the religion of Islam. Later on in the book, he's going to go in more detail regarding that al masalatul ula, that first issue. ثم قال الثانية العمل به. So let's rewind a little bit. Sheikh Muhammad Abdul Wahab, he says, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, I'lam rahimakallah, annahu yajibu alayna ta'allamu arba'i masail, al-ula al-ilm. So the Sheikh began by saying, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, in the name of Allah, the most merciful, the bestower of mercy. Does anyone recall any of the benefits that Sheikh Ahmed Bazmul mentioned regarding the Basmalah? The Basmalah? Mm-hmm. If you want a couple of Allah, <coughs> Right, he mentioned that some of the people of the past used to start their books with the Basmala. Are there any hadith regarding starting with the Basmala? Is there something that is um, all beneficial speech should start with the, the Basmala? 
the above, are there any authentic hadith regarding starting with the best man? Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, but one, one 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 thing he mentioned, he mentioned he he spoke about a hadith that some people use, um, where the part where, where it says the Prophet ﷺ said every affair that is not began with Bismillah rahman al rahim then with, 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 with Bismillah, then it is like an amputee. Yeah, but that, he said that was Daish, huh? Right. There's a hadith that it it's not an authentic hadith. It's an unauthentic hadith. Some people use it to as as a as a proof. Uh, that you you should start your affairs by you should you know as a proof that when you start a book or a writing you should say Bismillah. So Sheikh Ahmed Bazmul he mentioned that you know it's sufficient that when you open the Quran the first thing you see see is Bismillah. And some of the people of the past they used to start their writings with Bismillah. That's sufficient. We don't need to use any unauthentic hadith because Sheikh Al Albani checked this hadith and he found that. He checked all the chains of narration. He found that from every avenue there's a weakness in the hadith. Okay. So, um, I'lam rahimakallah anhu yajibu alayna ta'alamu arba'i masail. The shaykh said, no. After saying bismillah ar-Rahman rahim he said, have knowledge. May Allah have mercy upon you of the fact that it is obligatory upon us to learn four matters. The first one is knowledge. What, what kind of knowledge is he talking about? Okay, right, knowledge of the deen. Okay, this is what he's addressing here. Okay, as for the discussion about knowledge of the dunya and what place it takes in our life, we're not discussing that right now. <laughs> but he, he, he's talking about knowledge of, he's talking about the, he's talking about knowledge of the deen here. So he says, um, <clears throat> okay, so he says, al-ilmu, he says, well, he says, um, and he said, al ula al ilm. He said, he said the first, right? He said the first is knowledge, and it is that knowledge is having awareness of Allah, having awareness of His Prophet, and having awareness of the religion of Islam with its proofs. So now we're up to where he says, athania, the second matter that is obligatory for us to learn. He says, al amalu bihi, implementing the knowledge. Walis al muradu bil ilmi. أن تتباهى وأن تطغى به على الناس. Sheikh Ahmed Bazmul he says in his explanation he says is not intended that you seek knowledge so that you can compete with others and so that you can oppress people. وليس المراد بالعلم أن تذكر وأن يرفع شأنك بين الناس. He said and the intention behind seeking the knowledge is not so that you can be mentioned and so that you're uh so that you can be raised amongst the people in the sense that you know you know for uh, fame wa innama wa innama al murad bihi an ta'mala bihi lillahi azza wa jalla he said however the only intention behind the only intention behind seeking the knowledge is that you act upon it for Allah, for Allah's sake, the mighty and majestic. And that you follow the orders of Allah. فَلَا بُدَّ مِنَ الْعِلْمِ وَلَا بُدَّ مِنَ الْعَمَلِ بِهِ He said, so you have to have knowledge and you have to implement the knowledge. فَإِنَّ الْإِيمَانَ كَمَا يَقُولُ الْحَسَنُ الْبَصْرِ لَيْسَ الْإِيمَانُ بِالْتَمَنِّي وَلَا بِالْتَحَلِّي <clears throat> he said Al Hassan al Basri said that Iman, faith Is not something that you wish for And it's not something that you wear Like a garment He said however Iman is that which falls in the heart And that which, that which the actions affirm So whoever does good Whoever uh, says good and does good, it is accepted from him. وَمَنْ قَالَ خَيْرٌ وَعَمِلَ شَرٌ لَمْ يُقْبَلْ مِنْ And whoever says good and does evil, it is not, it is not accepted from him. This was a statement of Sheikh Hassan al-Basri, rahimahullah, of Al-Imam Hassan al-Basri. He said the whole thing. He said, لَيْسَ الْإِيمَانُ بِالتَّمَنِّي وَلَا بِالتَّحَلِّي He said, al-Iman, belief, 
is not something that you wish for, which means that it's something that you have to work to attain. And it's not something that you wear like a garment. He said, He said, however, Iman is that which falls in the heart, or that which uh, is established in the heart. And that which the actions affirm. So whoever says good and does good, it is accepted from him. And whoever says good and does evil is not accepted from him. This is a statement of Sheikh, of Sheikh Hassan al Basri. It's not accepted from him. <coughs> the Sheikh says, Ahmed Bazmuli says, no doubt that uh, action is the fruit of knowledge. So if you picture a tree, you know, the tree is knowledge and the fruit is action. So no one, no one wants a tree with no fruit. He said, and knowledge leads action. And it, and it was it was narrated from some of the people of the past that, 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 that they said, it said, knowledge called out to action. The person in the past said, knowledge called out to action. And if the action doesn't answer, the knowledge will go away. Knowledge calls out, the knowledge called out to action. And if the action doesn't answer, the knowledge goes away. وَمِنْ أَبْرَزِ الْأُمُورِ الْمُتَعَلِّقَةِ بِالْعِلْمِ ومن أبرز الأمور المتعلقة بالعلم الإخلاص لله عز وجل وأن يكون مقصودك الله عز وجل. He said, and from the greatest affairs that are connected to knowledge is having sincerity to Allah عز وجل, the mighty majestic, and that your intention is Allah. وأن لا تراقب الناس and that you don't watch the people. Wa Allah ta'mala lin nas, and that you don't act for the people. Wa inna ma turaqi wa Allah, but instead you watch Allah, Azza wa Jal. Meaning you keep your mind on Allah, you keep your attention on Allah. Wa al-amalu bil ilmi fi mutabati sunnat al-Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam fi shatnihi wa ahwalihi alaihi sallatu wasallam. And uh, <coughs> acting upon the it's acting upon the knowledge concerning following the Messenger, may Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, in his affairs, in all of his uh, 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 situations, Alaihi Salatu Wasallam. Al Amalu bil Ilmi an takuna taqiyan naqiyan. So he's saying that. Practicing the knowledge is that you follow the, the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in how, Meaning that in all of his different situations and circumstances وَالْعَمْلُ بِالْعِلْمِ أَن تَكُونَ تَقِيًّا نَقِيًّا And And um, Implementing the knowledge Is that you be pious And, 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 and pure La ghilla wa la hasada wa la adha. You shouldn't hold grudges and harbor jealousy and try to harm others. Wa illa man yata'allamu man yata'allamu anna adhiyyat al-Muslimin haram wa yu'dhihim ma fa'ilatu al-ilmi hinaha. He said, if a person knows that harming the Muslims is not permissible, but yet he still harms them, then what's the benefit of having this knowledge? <coughs> يَكُونُ الْعِلْمُ حُجَّةً عَلَيْهِ لَا حُجَّةً لَا The knowledge will be an argument against him and not an argument for him. مَنْ يَتَعَلَّمُ أَنَّ السُنَّةَ وَأَحْلَهَا غُرَبَاءُ فَهُمْ بِحَاجَةٍ إِلَىٰ أَنْ يَنْصُرُهُمْ وَيُؤَيِّدُهُمْ 
ثم يناصر أهل البدع والأهواء فأي فائدة من العلم هذا He said the one who learns that the people of the Sunnah are strangers and they need aid but yet he turns and he aids the people of innovation and desires then what benefit is this knowledge to him? Al-amalu bi'anna al-ilmu bi'anna al-ilmi Al-amalu bil-ilmi لو قام به أهله والله لقلت الفتن He said If the people were to implement their knowledge There will be few trials and tribulations ولو قام به أهله لتقاربت القلوب على الحق And if the people were to implement their knowledge The hearts would be close And united upon the truth ولكن هي فتن وابتلاء من الله عز وجل But these are trials and tribulations That Allah has ordained the mighty and majestic. يَتَعَلَّمُ الْمَرْءُ مِنَ الْعِلْمِ مَا يَكُونُ حُجَّةً عَلَيْهِ A person learns from the knowledge that which becomes an argument against himself. وَيَتَعَلَّمُ الْآخَرُ مِنَ الْعِلْمِ مَا يَكُونُ حُجَّةً له. And someone else, he learns from the knowledge that which will become an argument for him. فَلَا بُدَّ مِنَ الْعَمَلِ بِالْعِلْمِ He said, so we have to practice what we know. وَلِذَلِكَ من صفات العالم عند أهل العلم أن يكون عالما عاملا. He said for this reason, one of the characteristics of a scholar is that he has to be a scholar who practices what he knows. وإلا فلو كان عنده علم ثم نجد في أعماله الخبث والأذية والفساد والتفريق بين المسلمين ونجد في 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 أعماله تحزيب المسلمين. فلا شك أن هذا ليس بعالم يؤخذ منه العلم. He said, if we find that a person has knowledge, and then we see in his actions filth and harming the people, corruption, dividing the Muslims, we find him making the Muslims into parties and groups and sects, then there's no doubt that this is not a person you should take knowledge from. Because you can see he has the knowledge, but he's not practicing it. فَمَا بَالُكَ لَوْ كَانَ هَذَا الَّذِي يَعْمَلُ هَذِهِ الْأَعْمَالَ وَلَا يُعَدُّ طَالِبُ عِلْمٍ وَلَا يَسْتَحِقُ أَنْ يُوسَفَ بِأَنَّهُ عَالِمٍ He said, so if a person has, if a person does these things, they wouldn't even be concerned. They wouldn't even be considered to be a student of knowledge, and you can't be. Uh, and they don't. Have, and they have no right to be to be uh, called a scholar. فلا شك أن هذا لم يستفيد من علمه. So without any doubt, this person has not benefited from his knowledge. وأن المسلم عليه أن يبتعد عن أمثال هؤلاء كما نبه على ذلك أهل العلم. He said, and a Muslim should stay far away from the likes of these people. As the scholars have explained to us. فلا شك أن هذا لم يأكي. إذن فلا بد من العلم ولا بد أيضا من العمل. He's عمل. He says so. So we have to have uh, knowledge, and we have to have action. إذن فلا بد نعم. He said, uh, لماذا, لماذا العلم ولماذا لا بد من العمل? He said, why do we need knowledge? And why do we need... He says, لماذا العلم? لماذا لا بد من العلم? He said, why do we need knowledge? حتى لا, تت, حتى لا تتكلم في دين الله إلا ببصيرة. So that you won't speak about the religion of Allah except, with, except upon clear knowledge. فلا تكثر أخطاؤك. So your mistakes won't be a lot. وَلَا تُكْثِرْ مُخَالَفَاتُكْ And so that your opposition to the truth won't be a lot. وَإِنَّ الْخَطَأَ الَّذِي مِثْلُهُ لَا يُحْتَمَلُ مِنْ طَالِبِ الْعِلْمِ جَهْلُهُ يُؤَثِّرُ عِنْدَ الْعُلَمَاءِ فِي قِيمَةِ هَذَا الْمُخْطِئِ وَفِي بُعْدِهِ عَنِ الْحَقِّ فَمَا بَالُكَ حِينَ حِينَمَا يُخْطِئُ فِي مَسَائِلِ فِي مَسَائِلَ تَتَعَلَّقُ بِالْعَقِيلَةِ وَالتَّوْحِيدِ وَمَسَائِلَ تَتَعَلَّقُ بِالشِّرْكِ وَالتَّحْذِيرِ مِنْ ومسائل تتعلق بالمنهج 
He's saying so. Basically, what he's saying is that certain errors they can take away from the value of a student of knowledge. For example, if a student makes a, 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 a mistakes in basic things like tawheed, uh, shirk, uh, minhaj, it takes away from his value because it shows that, and he's going to continue. He says, he says, had he says here masailu wadihat zahirat. يَفْهَمُهَا طُلَّابُ الْعِلْمِ الصِّغَارِ قَبْلَ الْكِبَارِ He said, these are clear uh, matters. He said, even the small students of knowledge understand them, much less the, the, big, the, big, the big, big students of knowledge, or before the big students of knowledge. مِمَّا يَدُلُّ عَلَىٰ أَنَّ هَذَا إِمَّا أَنَّهُ لَمْ يُحَصِّلَ الْعِلْمَ بِطَرِيقَةٍ شَرْعِيَّةٍ وَإِمَّا أَنَّهُ قَدْ انْحَرَفَ وَزَاغَ قَلْبُهُ عَنِ الْحَقِّ he said this is indicative of the fact that he either did not learn the knowledge in a legislated way or he deviated, his heart went astray. And he said we ask Allah for, for safety and security. And to nasa bihasb He said, so the third matter, the first one is knowledge, the second one is acting upon it. The third is that you invite to the knowledge, that you call to the knowledge, that you give da'wah. He said, Hasb He said, according to your ability. Ma ta'allamta la mani'a an tadu'un nasa ilayhi. He said, that which you've learnt, there's nothing wrong with you calling the people to it and that you clarifying it to the people. He said, here we have to clarify an important matter. He said, you clarifying and transmitting the truth and the knowledge that you learned from the scholars <clears throat> is not giving a religious verdict. Just mere conveying and transmitting and clarifying that we should learn from the scholars is not the same as giving a fatwa. He says, <clears throat> and it's not from a tasadur. A tasadur means stepping forward to teach. He says, um, وَلَوْ تَعَلَّمْتَ مَثَلًا عَلَى سَبِيلِ الْمِثَالِ أَنَّ قَوْلْ وَالنَّبِي لَا يَجُوزُ وَأَنَّ قَوْلْ وَالنَّبِي مِنَ الشِّرْكِ الْمَنْهِي عَنْ لِقَوْلِهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَى مَنْ كَانَ حَالِفًا فَلْيَحْلِفْ بِاللَّهِ أَوْ لِيَسْمُتْ He said, so, <clears throat> for example, if you know that if a person says, if you know that the statement, if a person was to swear by the Prophet, if you know that that is from the prohibited shirk, if that's from shirk, because of the hadith of the Prophet, where the Prophet said, Whoever swears, let him swear by Allah or be quiet. The Prophet said, Do not swear by your fathers or your mothers, and not by Lat or Uzza. And whoever swears by other than Allah, then he has committed shirk. He said, he said, so when you hear this hadith, and then you hear someone swear by the Prophet, you say to him, Fear Allah. Don't swear by other than Allah, the mighty and majestic. And then you mention the proof to him. <clears throat> he said, this is not from stepping forward to teach. He said, this is from enjoying the good and forbidding the evil with knowledge and wisdom. He said, this is not prohibited. يَقُولُ يَا أَخِي لَسْتُ عَالِمًا The Shaykh said, هذا خطأ. He said, because we find many of the Muslims, unfortunately, they will see an error, and they will know it's an error. 
from, for example, they may know some statements from the, from the scholars, and they know the delil, they know the proof, but they will be quiet. And when it is said to them, why didn't you say anything? They say, I'm not a scholar. The sheikh said, this is an error. Okay. هذه شبه شيطانية لكي لا تأمر بالمعروف وتنهى عن المنكر. He said, these are satanic doubts so that you won't, to prevent you from enjoying the good and forbidden the evil. فلا بد أن تعلموا هذا بارك الله فيكم. He said, you, he said, you all must know this. May Allah bless you. أننا إذا تعلمنا مسألة من العلماء بدليلها ووجدنا من يخطئ فيها أنه يشرع لنا أن ننبهه وأن ندله على الحق وأن نرشده إلى الخير. He said, when we know an issue or a matter from the scholars with its proof, and we find someone making a mistake in that uh, issue, then it is, legisl- it is legislated for us to uh, bring the person's attention to it, and that we direct the person to the truth, and that we try to guide the person to the truth. We only have a couple of minutes left, right? Two minutes. No. So we're going to stop here until... Um, Next week. Subhanak Allah wa bihamdika. Ashadu wa la ilaha 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 Muslim is not allowed to swear by other than Allah. Do you understand what that means? You only can swear as a Muslim. A Muslim can only swear by Allah. You understand that? Um, you know, you can't say I swear by my mother. You know, I swear by my. You know, whatever they swear by. You know, you can't. Yeah, you can't. If, if a Muslim swears, you're only allowed to swear by Allah. Do you understand that? So you can say I swear by Allah. <clears throat> 